Hi guys, today it's a frequently requested thing from the channel. We've got Verdigris, we've got Moss, we've got a bronze statue, and we're trying to rush it using Dirty Dan. What could possibly go wrong? There's one more thing. We have a Kickstarter running. There is a link below. It is for the most gorgeous display cabinets you have ever seen, designed by miniature painters and collectors. Please check out the link below. We would love to have you on board. If you've got any questions whatsoever about the Kickstarter or anything like that, do pop them below as well. Thank you very much for your support. Let's jump into perfectly painting a model first time, every time, works every time. Couple of basics. Clippers, put the flat side next to the miniature. You'll get a much better result and a much cleaner result. And you always clip off the most delicate bits fast. Not that that's something that we have to worry about with a chunky terrain kit. Dry fit first, so put it together without any glue. That's a good dry fit, actually. That's a really high quality. Sanding sponge, cut it from the back into a strip. This stuff is incredible. I use 1000 or 2000 grit, generally. 1000 first, 2000 second. This is bad. So what we're gonna do is we'll over glue on the shoulder sections, and then we're just gonna have to wait and come back once it's dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put too much glue on this model. And what our aim is there is to have the glue bulge out. So we're doing what would normally be bad gluing. Here, as I said, keep it fairly light. get some bulging action. There's going to be a fingerprint there, but luckily it's the area we're sanding. Tiny bit more on the sides. Okay, so importantly we've let this dry because this will end up getting tacky otherwise. See that I've gone at this shoulder plate here. Um, it's not perfect on the edges, doesn't matter. Just going for the biggest areas of it. All that we've got left is I'm going to chip this guy a little bit. Things just look a little bit too clean for me. <laughs> All right, that's enough fiddling. Um, definitely broken up a little bit. I'll probably take a couple of chunks under the, out to the edge of the shield. This is my favorite one. Don't know what I did right there, but it looks better than the rest. Yeah, probably just accidentally did something that looks a bit more natural. All right, I'll do. Let's give it a prime and off we go. Okay, so series D, of course. The debate here would just be about access. Um, I always try and use the biggest brush, but I'm going to use this one because I think it's going to get me into places that the extra large can't. If you wanted to go for a more warm, I would go for a mix between these two. Screaming Bell's a really, really strong red uh, metallic. Uh, I just put a little bit of that in with this if you do want it in that type of direction. Now, it doesn't have crazy coverage, so I'm going to mix in a little bit of a brown with it. It's going to be using dried bark, fairly neutral, pretty dull actually. That's not a negative in this situation. Okay, it's wetter than I would do normally from the dampening pad, perfect for a base coat, and we're just going for coverage absolutely all over here. You could airbrush this if you wanted, I actually prefer a hand base coat in this situation though. got any particularly deep recesses don't worry about it um, we're going to be using a washing technique on this so they're going to get hidden Once I've given this brush a clean, I'm going to be stepping up to a larger brush. And the reason for that is that I'm fine with the recesses staying darker. It's the raised areas that we're looking to hit with the next step. Okay, for our next step, we're just going to use pure Rune Lord brush. 
Now, because our last step had a non-metallic paint in it, it was more dull. You can see how less shiny it is on the palette. That's really useful. So the stuff is further away in the recesses, it's gonna be darker, more dull, and it's gonna be glinting and more shiny the further we get out. It's gonna be removing quite a lot here. Give it a test. And then we're gonna traditionally dry brush with this. So I'm gonna keep it quite soft and we're just gonna try and kind of hit everything that sticks out. That's all we're worried about. If you've got some areas you're not sure about, hold it loosely, take your fingers back towards here and gently buff it and you can't go wrong. So I want to have a little bit of a punchy final highlight. I'm gonna add in any off silver. For this, I'm using Canabtech. You could use whatever you like though. Hopefully, as you can see, it's pretty much all within the same spectrum of colors. All right, final highlight time. I'm going to use a tiny amount of a pure silver. Pick the lightest one you've got and just use a very, very small part of it. Mix in the brush with the previous step, which will stop it from being as strong. And just softly touch all those edges. We're done, got a solid statue. So we're about to use a dirty down product. If you guys aren't familiar with these, they're pretty unique. They work very quickly and you're, you're trying to use them while they're still active. You can reactivate them with water, so it's not irreversible, but I'm just gonna make sure that I've got everything that I might need as close as possible to me. So I can just grab whatever I want as fast as I need. Okay, and I'm using a very old and battered size five, which is used for nasty tasks. It's been varnished. If anything goes awfully, you know, we can just delete it and go again. Very difficult to not panic when you're using products like this for the first time. Don't worry about it. They're just a little bit crazy and you can remove stuff if it doesn't work out. I'll take a moment to clean my brush and then let's show you some magic happening before your eyes. That's exactly what we're going for. So I don't want any of these areas that are too deep. So any that I see, I'm gonna spooge out. Do your thing. Now, because we're trying to do a weathered effect on something that is in the outdoors, the way that I'm thinking is that stuff's gonna be weathered from top to bottom. It'll be streaky, it'll be from the rain. So now at the removal stage, I'm gonna try and keep it in a top to bottom motion. But you guys have left it there. Am I removing when you would be leaving it all super aged? What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around it anywhere that's a bit too deep for my liking. It's in deep green. I'm going to see if I can absorb some of that out. With uncontrollable techniques like this, a lot of it is about just getting it to the stage that you're okay with and stopping fiddling. There we go. Really love the colors we've got there. Um, the chunks are a little bit annoying, so I think what we need to do for that is to put it all over, not diluted, so not involve water, and um, just like I said, work really, really quickly towards the beginning. You can tinker to your heart's content here. You know, you can wipe it off with your thumb or whatever. At the point at which you're happy with it, you don't need to seal it. You know, 
unless your model's going for a swim at any point soon. Um, but if you're worried about it, you could absolutely give it a varnish. Stop. <laughs> we're not pleased with this model currently, so we're gonna redo it. Might be down to your personal preference. You might like what we've got on the table currently. I wasn't pleased with it though, so we're off to the sink. Great. All right, we've moved knives out of the way so YouTube doesn't decide to ban our video for some reason. We have this model, it needs to be cleaned up. This is water soluble, so I assume this is gonna work. Used warm water, I've got a soft toothbrush. And hopefully, this is gonna work okay. I'd avoid using a stiff bristled nylon brush. You're just gonna risk screwing up your model underneath. And I quite actually like the paint job under this, so we'd like to maintain it. That is not bad at all, actually. Annoyingly, the big bits that I want to get rid of the most, they seem to be the most thoroughly attached. Let's try washing up like it. What's the worst that could happen? doing for the next video, Byron? Oh, I'm uh, covering a screwed up model in washing up liquid and gin. And next week on That Makes No Sense, we'll be waxing an owl. Maybe we cover it in moss. Definitely what we meant to do first time round. This is gonna start becoming more colorful as I dry it. Maybe we'll accidentally end up somewhere completely new. Prediction correct. The bits that have touched a lot of water have gone incredibly pale, really bright and striking. My model actually feels squeaky clean because of washing up liquid and or gin. And uh, yeah, I think I actually prefer how the shield looks now. Maybe we'll give it a quick dry brush to catch the raised areas with a silver, and then we'll try some verdigris or some moss, sorry, towards the bottom, like it's working its way up. And then, yeah, we will have accidentally arrived at a completely different destination to our originally planned one. Why would anyone use a paint shaker? Well, maybe because they don't want tennis elbow. Okay, let's go. I mean, this is gonna be absolutely amazingly fun. Also, because we've scrubbed it, this is gonna put back any edges we knocked off in the cleaning. So it's doing double duty. areas like here are actually looking really good. You can use it heavier on the brush, so more of the paint on the brush than normal for dry brushing, but I'll use lower pressure, so less leaves while I'm working. finish up the paint that I've got on the palette and then we'll go in again and uh, maybe cock up again, why not? Okay. Clean that brush off, even if it is weak, we don't want it sitting around on the bristles. Right, I'm gonna follow some advice that I got from some of our viewers, so I don't, again, I don't have some pure alcohol to hand, which was recommended, but I'm gonna use airbrush thinner instead. And I'm not gonna involve water in my process for at least a significant portion of it. All right, I've already dropped a great big splodge on by accident. Things are looking good. Concentrating on the bottom of the miniature. My God, this is green. I mean, maybe moss would have collected there. Perhaps we can get away with that. We will be removing some of this. So gonna work quickly. Loads in the deep recesses. Let's get some in areas where it would collect, which is kind of fortunately or unfortunately the same place as the verdigris. 
think if it snowed, where would stuff sit? It's one of my favorite ways to work it out. Right, I'm gonna have to stop soon. We won't involve water, or at least we won't involve a large amount of water just yet. Okay, done. Clean brush, find wipey thing. Old marble cloth, that will do. Take a section that's gonna be the least fluffy. It's not about getting it perfect, it's just about breaking the illusion that I have placed this. I want nature to have placed this and made less mistakes than me, ideally. All right, hair dryer out, fingers crossed. As it's become more obvious while drying, some of my worst areas become more obvious, so just go in there and wipe them off, or at least break the edge. Perfect example here, let's get rid of that. Bring in old faithful sad brush, look for hard lines and just delete them. Or at least soften them. So I would be lying if I said I was 100% satisfied with that or, or anywhere near actually, but I am much more pleased than I was with it. That looked pretty good on a gaming table as well, so I hope you learned something from my cock-ups here. Uh, big takeaways, um, water will start chunking in whatever you used to put it on your model. You've got to work really fast. Alcohol is your friend. Uh, not like that. And uh, it's water soluble, so if you screw up, especially if you popped a varnish down beforehand, just don't worry about it. Don't dismay. Take a break. Think how you can fix it, and you might well be surprised with the results. Okay, that's it. This turned out pretty well. Now, I don't know if you guys preferred it how it was, or maybe a middle ground of how it was combined with how it's ended up. But I don't know what the takeaway from this is. It's probably that you should just be okay with making mistakes, right? So I am sat at my table. This, if I'm gonna do a video on this, it's gonna be about how much it failed, uh, how I spent a lot of hours doing stuff and recording it, um, and how it looks like it didn't spend very long on it. So yeah, mistakes happen a lot actually, in the hobby. It's absolutely fine, we learn from them. You often don't forget mistakes that were big and you do forget mistakes that were small. So I'm never gonna be repeating this mistake again, hopefully, touch wood, fingers crossed. Anyway, I hope you like the statue. Let me know which version of it you are the most into. Kind of now, what I'm thinking is that I want to go away and look at more nature reference picks or, you know, just real world reference picks and see whether moss would collect. You know, do I need to kind of run it down the recesses? Don't know what you guys think about that. We have Kickstarter running. Um, hopefully, this is the last time I'll be recording an intro or outro against a blank wall, and I might have some super sexy cabinets here in the near future. Or a load of holes in my wall. I'm not very good at DIY. Yeah. Anyway, uh, running or appearing on screen now will be the Kickstarter video, potentially, or just some lovely shots of the cabinet which are absolutely gorgeous. I've been involved in the design of them, as have a load of members of our team. They are the best miniature cabinets uh, you will have ever seen because we couldn't find the right ones, so we designed them. So this is the result of a huge amount of combined years of wants and needs and requirements. They are bomb-proof, they're indestructible, they're pretty easy to install, he says. We'll see how that goes for me. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for tuning into the video. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. Any questions about the Kickstarter, whether you're a backer or not, pop them down below. Happy to answer each and every one, no matter how specific or only retentive they are. I understand that before you drop money on something, you probably want to know a lot about it. So um, yeah, pop them all below and I'll sort you out. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video. There's going to be a load of videos coming out soon, by the way. Um, we've been very, very busy prepping. 
We're still very busy, but we're less busy than we were. So we're getting a little bit more time to record, including some for the Lord of Change, which we're quite excited about. So that's it. We'll catch you in the next video.